Hey everybody, today we're going to be taking a look at probably one of the most controversial Linux operating systems that's out there today. It's Deepin. Now Deepin is a Chinese-made Debian-based operating system. We're going to be looking at 20.7 today. They do have a preview available for Deepin 23, but until it's actually done, I don't think I really want to cover it yet because there's so much information in that one that we need to cover with the new package management system and their own applications that they've designed to make it even more smoother. Now, about two years ago, there was a major falling out in the community. Well, not fallout in the community. There was a major complaint in the community because everybody believed Deepin to be spyware. Well, there have been many people that have delved into this and you can't really find anything. I've looked at it. I've ran it through network transmissions to see exactly what it might be doing then the only thing i've ever caught it doing was updating information about the applications that you have on there with its app store and that's pretty much it now if you have found anything else out there that you think it might be doing please let me know in the comments below but one of the reasons i love covering this distribution is just how beautiful it is and how functional it is it is based on debian and if you go to their website which is deepin.org you come to this screen right here. You can download Deepin 20.7. There is a preview for Deepin 23. And then you can kind of scroll down and it lets you know all this useful information that out of the box, it is great. It's user friendly, privacy protected, powerful community. It's open source and it's perfect ecology. Now, I do want to say this. It was mentioned not too long ago that China was basically going to dump Windows use across all their government operations, which Really, I don't care because it's a communist country and if they're getting rid of Windows, good for them, whatever. But I think this is where Linux is going to step in or Deepin is going to step in. I think where we got to watch out is the Chinese government actually taking the Linux OS and producing it themselves. I think if it gets to that point, we really got to concern ourselves with it. Now, Deepin has over 40 applications based on user habits. Free working style, it's got grand search, screen capture, OCR. Productivity makes life better. And I do want to point something out right now. If my audio doesn't sound real well, I apologize. I've been messing with it for about an hour and a half because my main microphone has died. So I'm actually on a backup mic. So if the audio is bad, I am so sorry. And then you can come down here and it goes over some of the applications you can get and then let you know the Deepin 20.7 was released on September 1st. And then the preview for 23 came out in August and what the deal is is if you decide you want to give deepen a try and you want to install 20.7 once deepen 23 comes out you will not be able to update to deepen 23 you'll have to do a complete fresh install so we'll go from there and then it's talking about deepen 23's atomic updates but like i said i won't cover that in a future video and then user feedback so what we're going to do right now is we're just going to go ahead and zip on over to the desktop i'm going to close out of the browser and here's your desktop. Now, if you download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, this is the screen you're going to be met with. Down on the bottom, you've got a single dock or panel, whatever you might want to call it. You've got your usual suspects over here. You've got trash, date and time, power, keyboard, search, and then, of course, screenshot tool right there, and then keyboard. And then if you click on that, you've got some more hidden things here, which is sound, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and battery. So I'm going to go ahead and minimize that back down. And you've got a laid out simple dock right here in the center a lot like windows 11 now deepen's been doing this for years so you can't say they copied from windows 11 if anything windows 11 copied from them and then if you come over here you've got your app launcher you can click on that and it opens up your app launcher now you can make this more of a full screen and it'll give you this look right here if that's what you want i'm going to go ahead and shrink it back down now, as a matter of fact, I'll leave it up there because it's easier for you to see when you're watching the video. Now, if you're somebody that likes the old layout where you have everything on the left-hand side of the bar, that's real easy to fix. All you got to do is right-click on the bar, go to mode, and instead of fashion mode, you can go to efficient mode, and it'll move everything over, drop everything down, and get rid of the spacing or the floating panel, as you might call it. I'm going to go ahead and flip it back to fashion mode. I just wanted to show you that you have the ability to do that. Now, right here on it, well, first things first, I want to change this to a dark mode because I do love the way they have created this operating system and desktop environment. 
but I really don't like light. I want it to be darker. So I'm going to go ahead and change that right now. And while we're here, let's go ahead and cover the settings. You do have biometric authorization if you've got a laptop or something like that that uses facial recognition. You can use it in Deepin, and then you can set up your accounts here. I've just thrown in a base account, and to let you know, I'm not running this on a virtual machine. I've actually have it installed on bare metal. It's an IdeaPad 3 i5 with 8 gigabytes of RAM. And then your display adjustment over here, you can change your color temperature if you'd like to for night shift, and then also change your just base color temperature. Display scaling, you have adjustments for right here, your resolution, refresh rate, and then of course your standard rotation. And then Deepin ID, if you want to set up an account or a Deepin account, you can do that. Default applications for your web page, mail, text, music, video, pictures, and terminal. And then personalization. I just showed you we went to a dark mode here. Now you can change your access color if you would like. You could switch it over to red or yellow or blue, whatever you might like. I'm going to leave it on that red right there. You can turn window effects on or off. I'm going to go ahead and leave that on, which gives you transparency. And then, of course, window minimization goes in a scale. Let me go ahead and maximize that for you all. And then show transparency effects when window is moved. You can do that. So that way, when you move the window, it gives you kind of a transparent look. Okay, let's go ahead and maximize that back up. And then your rounded corners, you can make them smaller or larger. Like right now, you've got a nice large rounded corner. If you were to back that down, you see it's got more of a point to it. And then you could do just a little one. And then, of course, you could do a bigger rounded corner. I like that. And then, of course, you could change your icon theme if you would like. Cursor theme, change your fonts, scale those from right there. And then, of course, your dock. Fashion mode, location, status, keep shown. You could set it up to where it could keep hidden or smart hide it when you open a window. And then, of course, you could make it larger or smaller and adjust that pretty much how you want it. And then your plug-in area, select which icons appear in the dock. If you don't want trash to appear in the dock, you can uncheck it. As you can see, it's right down here. Let's get rid of that. Uh, show desktop, if you don't need that, you could get rid of that as well, and that's over here. And it's just a way for you to customize this panel, dock, whatever you want to call it. You can pretty much customize it to anything you want. And then you've got your network, notifications, and sound. Output levels, you can adjust those. Output, input, sound effects for specific things that you want to set up, whether it be low battery, volume up and down. You can turn sound effects on or off. That's completely up to you. And then, of course, your device is what you might have plugged in at this present time. And then Bluetooth, date and time, power, update, system info. Let's go ahead and open that up, and it lets you know we're on the Deepin version 20. in this community 20.7, 64-bit. It comes with the 5.1, 5.45 kernel. And I'm running it on an Intel i5 with 8 gigabytes of RAM. And then your addition license, it does come with a EULA. You can look at that, which is right there. Your privacy policy, backup and restore, and then general settings. So let's go ahead and close out of settings, and let's take a little tour around. This is the file manager. Let's open that up, and I think this is a gorgeous file manager. And it scales rather easy and smooth. But you've got your usual suspects over here, your home desktop videos, music, pictures, documents, downloads, and then, of course, your home directory files right here. Let you know you've got your system disk, and then you've got your data disk. Now, this is, like I said, one of the most polished systems that I look at. Uh, I think it's just a beautiful operating system. The applications that have been implemented in it all go across the whole OS theme. It's just really beautiful. So let's go ahead and close out of the file manager. Then you do have your app store. Let's open that up. Now, I did notice this the last time I took Deepin for a test drive, which was about nine months ago, that even though you do have a dark mode set up, for some reason it doesn't transfer over to the store. Now, I did use this store to download OBS so I could record this video. You just go in and type in what you're looking for. You click on OBS Studio. It brings it up right here, lets you know the rating. Let you know what version it is and also 
information about it right here. You can do that pretty much with anything you want to download. Let's look for Caden Live. Caden Live pops up right there. Let's go ahead and click on that. That way we can get a general view at it, let you know it's a four-star program, gives you a couple screenshots, gives you user ratings right here, and it just makes things really easy. And must-haves. This right here will give you recommendations of things that they think you need, whether it be GIMP, VLC, uh, Qubit Torrent, Telegram, Brazero, Discord, and then your office applications down here, audio and video, system. It's just a really nice store. You can do your updates through here. You can look at all applications through here. It's just something, if you want to go in and download it and take it for a test drive, go over and take a look at the store. I think it's one of the better put together stores in a Linux distro that's out there today. So let's go ahead and close out of that. And then you come down here, you've got your photo app. Let's go ahead and open that up. As you can see, it's a very beautiful application. And then you've got your music app. And I'm going to open those together for the simple fact I want to show you that everything has the same theme. Everything looks the same and really works across the operating system. So let me go ahead and close out of that. And let's close out of that. And you've got your calendar down here. And it's got a beautiful calendar. You can set this up. You can sync it with accounts. It just has a local account right now. You could pretty much set it up however you wanted to. But like I said, you've got the consistent theme that's going across the whole operating system, which is, like I said, very beautiful. Let's close out of that. Then you've got settings there. We've already looked at that. Now let's go over here to launcher. You've got your browser, app store, screen capture, which you do have down here. Let's go ahead and open that up. And pretty much you can take whatever you want here. You can click there. If you want to take a scroll screenshot, you can. If you want to extract the text from a screenshot, you can. But it gives you lots of different options. There you go. I took a full screenshot. You can view it if you want to. It's right here in your pictures folder. Let's go ahead and open that up. And there's your screenshot right there. It is a very nice operating system. The way everything is integrated is really seamless. Now let's come back down over here to our applications. You've got your browser, file manager. You've got your movie, screen capture we looked at. Terminal. Let's see just what we're using in resources. Let's see if they have HTOP. They don't. Let's go with top. And right now, at rest, I'm using about 1.7 gigabytes at rest. Now, I do have OBS running in the background. OBS generally runs anywhere from 700 megs to a gig, depending on what operating system I'm running on. So, if you just take 700 off, you're running at about a gig at rest with just the terminal open, which I think is pretty awesome for such a good looking and beautiful operating system. So let's go ahead and just close out of that. And we'll come back down here. Then you've got mail. They have a beautiful, beautiful email application that comes with it. You can set up an email account any way you want. Right here, you are gonna see some of the Chinese ones that are over there. You've got Gmail, you've got Yahoo Mail. You can set up other mailboxes. I know for a fact you can set up Proton Mail. You can also set up Outlook. And I do have an Outlook account or a Hotmail account. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug it in real quick. And give me just one second. And my Hotmail account is syncing. Now what I want to do is I'll go to Spam. So that way none of my emails can be seen up here. But as you can see, it's starting to sync. And the inbox is showing right there. I've got two new ones. I've got Drafts. I've got Sent. Trash. Spam. But it's a very awesome email application that already comes with Deepin. It reminds me a lot of Apple Mail on Mac. You might disagree. If you think it reminds you of something else, let me know. Put that in the comments below. And like you see, there's right there, I got some spam. Let's go ahead and open this spam up. Please, can we talk privately? Michael Joseph. This is probably somebody that's saying they've just inherited $3 billion and they need a bank account to put it in. So I'm not going to bite on that one. So not today, Satan. Let's right click that and delete it. And that is gone. But I suggest if you do give this a shot, check out the mail app. It's really impressive. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of that. And I'm going to confirm that. And then we're going to come back down here. And you've got text editor. You've got draw, downloader, simple scan, computer, control center. Let's see what the system monitor says we're doing with OBS running in the background. See. 
that's the difference you're going to get. 2.5 gigs on your system monitor, and well, we were at 1.7. Let's look it up. Let's see what we got here. Let's go back to terminal, and we will run top. And top says we're using about 1.8. So with system monitor in the background, that's going to bump it up a little bit. So the system monitor, as usual, is showing different numbers than what top is. And that's frustrating because I wish we could just get a system monitor that really gave us what top and H top give us in the terminal. I know with KDE, you got the H top system monitor, but even then you can run a terminal command or a console and look it up and it still doesn't match. So let's go ahead and close out of those and come back over here and calculator. Let's go to the next screen package installer. You do have the GW package installer. So if you do download a Debian package, you can install it from there. And then you've got LibreOffice installed out of the box. And then I downloaded OBS Studio so I could record the video. So that's just a quick look at, like I said, one of the most controversial Linux distributions that's out there today. Deepin 20.7. It's a really nice operating system. It does have a EULA and it is not spyware. Everything that I've done and looked around in it, I couldn't find it. Uh, it did share information back and forth about the applications I was running for updates, but other than that, I haven't found it. If you disagree or you've got proof that it might be spyware, please throw that in the comments below. But other than that, it is a great operating system. I suggest you go over, download it, throw it on a USB, put it in a virtual machine, and take it for a test drive. I think you'll be highly impressed. Do me a big favor today before you leave. Please like this video. The more likes I get on a video, the more the video stays in the algorithm. And if you find something interesting in my videos, somebody else out there will find it interesting too. And subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. And if you end up not liking me, you can always unsubscribe. And if you like the channel and enjoy the videos that we are producing, you can support us by becoming a member to the channel, buying us a cup of coffee, going over to PayPal and throwing us a donation, or zipping on over to Patreon and becoming a patron to the channel. Those links will be in the description below. And as always, thank you so much for watching my video, and I will see you in the next video.